So this right here is exactly what a cardiac arrest looks like. Uh, we basically have about, really, it comes down to about three different options on what's gonna happen inside of a cardiac arrest. I'm gonna explain these three options, what we do, how to do it, how to be a leader, how to run a code, and if you've never gone to a cardiac arrest before, and you go to your first one, believe me, it will change your life. It will change the way that you see things. Um, it'll be a powerful moment. I'm gonna give you my best tips that I have in this video right here for cardiac arrest workup. Let's dive into it. Hey guys, the Paramedic Coach. I want to thank you for watching this video. And down below, you're going to see a like and subscribe button. Click like, click subscribe. We can share this video with more people in the EMS community. This channel is related to EMS medicine. What we're going to talk about in this video here is cardiac arrest. Okay. Now I said earlier about how we, you know, work up cardiac arrest. Okay. What's our, what are our goals with cardiac arrest? How do we lead a code? How do I run a code? Okay. So here's the first thing, the first thing I'm going to go over, okay? The first tip I'm going to give you here is I want you to remember the family. And what I mean by that is, if available, if you can have a responder on scene be the eyes and ears of the scene, if available, okay? I know it's not always available, but if available, if you can have a responder in a non-medical role be on scene to tell the family exactly what's going on, Okay, to update them and have them be basically the provider for the family, that would be critical in this cardiac arrest scenario. The way that you move, the way that you act, the way that your voice sounds, the way that your tone is, how calm you are when you're in the leadership role of a code is going to impact the entire team. Okay, Now, people that do a really good job of working a code, okay, is some of our greatest hospitals in the United States. Now, in EMS, we're out on the road. There's other factors to deal with. In a perfect setting, my goal in a cardiac arrest is to make the setting that I'm in as perfect as I can. What I mean by that is, if the patient is, let's say, I have my kitchen over here. Well, I have an island here in my kitchen, and there's a very small section here in between the island. We're not gonna work a patient in that, in that section of the island that patient's there, we're going to move that patient out into a, a greater space where we can actually work the patient, have more room. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is you need room to work. Okay. If you don't have room to work, get some room because you don't have room to work. Everything you do is not going to be effective. Okay. So that is number one. Number two, number tip I'm going to give you here. The next, in the next section of tips is going to be to keep your voice at the same tone throughout the call. If you're going to be calling the shots and leading the code, you want your tone to kind of be the same, similar to how I'm doing this video, trying to kind of show you guys how it works here, right? So that would be the next step as far as how to lead that code. Now, the next thing is we have three types of things, only three types of things that can happen to our patient when they're in cardiac arrest. There's three things. We have three options in cardiac arrest. Option one is they're in what we call a lethal arrhythmia, okay? What that means is someone's in a heart rhythm that either can kill them or has already killed them, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? That's your VTAC and VFib. If you ever seen an EKG that looks like, like this, okay, or like this, okay, that's your VTAC and your VFib, okay? You can just see by looking at it. If you were a lay person watching this video and you're like brand new and, e and brand new and your first day EMT school, does that look normal? Nope. Okay, that is a what we call a shockable rhythm. So the thing is, what's some of the best recommendations that we have for cardiac arrest? Do a ton of compressions and shock lethal arrhythmias. So if they're in VTAC or VFib, we have the chance to shock them and do compressions, which means that they're gonna have a great outcome. Okay, they have the best chance of having a great outcome. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna go to is asystole. Well, in asystole, it looks like this. This is your flat line. Now, what that means is I want you to think of the patient's heart. Remember, this is cardiac arrest, okay? 
In cardiac arrest, the heart is not pumping, but the heart has two systems. I want you to think of the heart as a pump and the heart as, ele as a electrical current, okay? The EKG shows the electrical current, if you will, of the heart. What's the EKG? What's the electrical current of the heart? What does it look like, okay? Think about it like that. That's the way I simply explain it to you. Now, the pump of the heart is the muscle of the heart. It yeah, pumps, right? So look at this. If you're in a systole, your heart's not pumping because you're in cardiac arrest, so that's not happening. So something happened to stop that. And also, there's no, there's no, there's nothing. There's no electrical activity in the heart. It's nothing. It's flat. It's nothing there. That is usually a sign of a bad outcome. Okay. Have people gone a systole and came back? Yes, yes. But it's more bleak. Give you a basic understanding and then the advanced understanding. So if you're a medic student, stay to the end because this is for my medic students. You're gonna want to see this. And if you're a brand new EMT, get ready for the ride. <laughs> you're gonna love this. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about here is PEA. So PEA means they have no pulse. Get them on the monitor. They can look like this, but they don't have a pulse, which means the pump of the heart the mechanical portion of the heart that makes it pump, the muscle isn't pumping, but the, the electrical system of the heart is still working. So the, there's pump failure. So that's what's caused, what can cause the pump failure? Well, we got to figure this out. What's going on here? Okay, that's PEA. Next tip I want to give you about cardiac arrest is going to be going over how to solve this PEA problem. Now here's what it is. I'm going to go through all the different things that might cause a cardiac arrest. Well, the first thing is going to be your hypoxia or your hypovolemia. So not having enough fluid in the body or not having enough oxygen in the body. But you're already going to treat those things. You're going to have them on some sort of either a BVM or intubation or oxygen or something, right? Something's going to go on with oxygen and something's going to go on with you putting an IV bag and getting a line. You're going to do that, okay? So those are done. So we don't worry about those things. We're already gonna treat those. Now the next thing I'm gonna uh, uh, pop up is going to be, well, what about, what, what if they're hypothermic? Well, my thing is, if they're hypothermic, it's probably gonna be, well, they're probably somewhere cold. You're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna miss that. I think it's gonna be fairly obvious that, that, that w that's what might have caused this event. So let's, let's go over that too. I think, you're gonna, I think you're gonna be good enough to see that. Let's keep moving on. What else could it be? Well. It could be a huge PE. It could be a huge heart attack. That's what they call you know, thrombosis, right? So it could be that. It could be a it could be a huge stroke, right? That could be it, right? That could be it could be it too. Like some sort of clot. Like it caused him to pass away, of course. So if 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 that's the case that caused them to go in, into into car, into cardiac arrest, they had a huge clot. Sadly, we're not going to be able to save those patients for the most part. Their outcomes are going to be less. We can't do much to change that outcome in the ambulance. It, it is what it is. Okay. Now, what can we solve in the ambulance? Well, a blood sugar issue, some sort of overdose, some sort of acidosis, and some sort of electrolyte problem. Well. The thing is, most the most common electrolyte problem you see is actually have to do with potassium. So what I'm here to say is, hydrogen ion acidosis and hyperkalemia is both treated by sodium bicarb, and then obviously hyperkalemia is treated with you know, calcium, right? So when we look at that, think about that in your codes. That's something you might be able to fix. Well, what about a blood sugar issue? Get a blood sugar. Okay, have someone on scene get a blood sugar. Okay, what if that was a problem? Solve that. Okay, if it's low, okay, let's solve that bad boy. Right, solve that issue. Okay, well, what else can we solve? Well, what if it's some sort of overdose? Solve that issue. Are you carrying an antidote for something that might have caused them to go into cardiac arrest? Give it to them. Right, and again, the way I always think about medicine is on a practical side of things, right? So these, when we're going through our scenarios for 15, 20 minutes in our cardiac arrest, this is what we want to do. Now, 
The next thing that I, I want you to go over is I want you to know in a cardiac arrest what to do when you're going in route to the call. If you're your first cardiac arrest, I want you to know exactly how to go into it, how to prepare for it. So if you're going to a call where you think it might be a cardiac arrest, I want you to start going over roles and responsibilities in route to the call with your team. What exactly you're gonna do for the first three, four minutes you're on scene. What's gonna happen, what you're gonna prepare for. Go over your meds. I want you to start going over your, <clears throat> going over your meds, going over, going over what you're gonna do, all that stuff. I want you to be able to, to go over and get that get rolling in your head. Start playing out the code in your head as you're going in route to the call, right? And who's gonna do what? Again, if we prepare before we go in, we're gonna have a, a great outcome. So guys, I hope that this gave you a lot of great information about getting ready for your next cardiac arrest. And guys, finally, if you have any questions down below, drop them down below in the comment section. And guys, finally, to wrap up, I got some really, really exciting news. The Paramedic Coach course is brand new down below in the description. It's got a brand new facelift. We are on a brand new webpage. It absolutely looks crisp. It looks awesome, as you can see on the screen here. And guys, you'll see some screenshots of some of our students getting results of the program recently. Here they are, popping up on the screen. And, and guys, what I wanna tell you is this Paramedic Coach program. If you're an EMC school or a paramedic school or thinking about getting inside of EMS, this program will literally transform your career and your life. Now, what I mean by that is, click the link down below in the description. I'll explain the whole program to you and what it is. But for now, I'll leave it at that. What I can tell you is this. I've put my entire knowledge that I've taught people on the road in the ambulance into this course, and we have some huge updates coming right around the corner. So with those updates, is going to involve the price of the course being more money, okay? Because I'm going to be doing more inside, inside the course. So if you, want to, if you ever thought about getting access to this course, take action right now before these next wave of updates and this next wave of things come. Guys, thank you so much for supporting my journey and thank you so much for supporting this channel and watching to the end of this video. You're a rock star. Like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Let's crush it.